I'm Anuradha Mathur and I have been teaching physics at Mon School Vasant Vihar. Now we are going to see how we can use Kirchhoff's rules for electrical circuits to find a condition for resistances for a balanced Wheaston bridge. Let us see what our Wheaston bridge looks like. It must have four resistances and the pair placed in series and they placed in parallel. If I mark this P, Q, R, S, according to Wheatstone bridge, a balanced bridge would happen if I have something to check the current flowing through this section like a galvanometer, then there should be no current in the galvanometer. We are going to use Kirchhoff's rules to establish a condition for P, Q, R, S for a balanced bridge. What is Kirchhoff's law state? The rule states, so first one is a junction rule, which says that if a current is entering a particular junction, then it divides into different sections in such a way that this value is equal to the sum of the others. So, how many junctions are there? A, B, C and D and let us see if this happens. If I is the current entering A and say I 1 goes through P then from your rule the current in this section will be I minus I 1. At junction B this current I 1 would divide to flow through the galvanometer say this value is I g and through Q it would be I 1 minus I g. Likewise we can establish what will be the current through S at this junction D I g and this section has I minus I 1. So, the current in this portion of the circuit would be I minus I 1 plus I g and at C all this adds up to become I value. What is the second rule? The second rule is a loop rule which says that if you have a loop like A B D A or another loop B C D then the potential drop across it is going to all add up to a 0 value. Let us start from here. I have marked this loop by taking it clockwise. So, I 1 P through this section the current is I g. So, I g into the resistance of the galvanometer let us say it is g value. Now, the current is flowing opposite to the direction of current here the current is like this and the loop is considering it in the opposite direction. So, I put a minus sign and I say I minus I 1 multiplied by R and this should add up to 0 from our second rule which is our loop rule. In the second circuits this little section here we can start with what is happening to the current through Q. So, Q into I 1 minus I g the current is this in this direction and the loop is considering it opposite. So, we put a minus sign there I minus I 1 plus I g into S and in this section also is the same way it is going the opposite way. So, what would it be? It would be minus I g into g and this should become 0 as well. For balance condition, these two points should be at the same potential. That means the current Ig should become 0. Value for the galvanometer resistance cannot become 0. However, Ig will be 0. So, our two equations will then reduce to I 1 p minus I minus I 1 into R equal to 0, and in this one it will be I 1 q this term becomes 0 and here it will be minus i minus i 1 s and this entire term becomes 0 because i g is 0. So, this is equal to 0. Finding the ratio of these two equations you will get the value p upon q is equal to r upon s. This indeed is the requisite for a balanced Breeston bridge. That means, the ratio of these two resistances must be equal to the ratio of the other two. 
this is taken care of in a meter bridge and we do not have to know all the three resistances to find any one of them. Instead of R and S you have a 1 meter long wire and a jockey can tap it at different positions. Therefore, the length of the wire involved will contribute towards R and 100 minus that length will contribute towards S and therefore, a uh, same condition is established in meter bridge and that can be used to find the resistance of any conductor for which we do not know the value, but you will definitely need another conductor for which the resistance is known. That means, knowing Q you can find P, R and S would be contributed by the lengths of the wire for meter bridge using the jockey D. So, you have learned how a meter bridge is a useful variation of Wheatstone bridge. You have learnt how this condition for balance bridge requires the ratio to be there for the resistances and this can be very useful in doing calculations, solving circuit problems and you will remember that the junction rule and the loop rule from Kirchhoff's law was used for finding this.